uh, can't really remember the last time I came downtown, but it looks so different and exciting. I mean, there's lofts and shops and restaurants everywhere. It's like a Monopoly board. That's right. Thanks to Evan Makovsky, even the street we're standing on right now has been transformed. And how did he do it? Well, if we take the Fontius building right there, Marriott residence in there, California Street there. Evan Napoli! Wait, wait, wait. Is that what you say when you win a game of Evanopoly? I think so. You yell Yahtzee when you win at Yahtzee, right? Y yeah, let's just um, cut to watching the video about Evan Makovsky and let's learn more about him. Evan's full of life. He has a really big heart. He's deeply committed to people and to their quality of life. And at the same time, he's an incredible businessman with strong vision and a strong bias for action. Evan gets stuff done. I was uh, born and raised in Pueblo, Colorado. My family, my father uh, was born in Russia. I came to Denver to go to the University of Denver. And after getting his master's degree in finance, we formed the company Shane Smikowski in 1971. He started out as uh, just a broker selling uh, real estate and developed it into the company that it is today, which is a real powerhouse in Denver. Evan's been uh, tremendously impactful to uh, the upper part of downtown. Uh, we're sitting today in the Sage Building. Uh, this entire city block, Evan was able to assemble it and it was primarily uh, blighted. The block known as 162 was the missing link between the 16th Street Mall and the Convention Center. Urban planners refer to Evan as the urban hero. Because it, it really was a concern walking between 15th and 16th. And he was involved here with the Oxford Hotel in the 1980s. And also he was one of the originators of the Denver Union Station project. Evan was able to save the Colorado Business Bank building. Uh, it was a complicated transaction. So this is Humpty Dumpty put it back together again. But at heart, he really is an historic preservationist. He was one of the first people to have the knowledge that Brighton Boulevard had a great future. It's a warehouse project that now will convert to a multifamily development. The two hotels that he's recently built in Boulder that are adjacent to the Google campus. All projects that had a very long timeline. Evan very often has been right about what, but not having to be right about when. Our commitment really has been to be able to give back to this community and to this country that's given us so much. He's been involved with Metropolitan State. He's been involved with Denver Health. It's a, a safety net for so many individuals in the Denver area. And they've been very much involved in the Jewish community. He was the board chair of Shalom Park. It sets a, a, an amazing example of care. Uh, the Pajama Party was a, uh, an event that was started by Evan and Walter Eisenberg some many years ago to support the homeless community. One of Evan's greatest accomplishments was when he engineered the opening of the Denver Academy of Torah, known as DOT. We both have this passion for traveling. Uh, one of the jokes that we make is that we have to take an extra person because Evan always has baggage for at least two people. In my mind, no better education than being able to travel away from your home, away from your country. He's one of the most ethical businessmen in the community. The inaugural award, the Bill Daniels Ethical Leader of the Year Award, went to Evan Makovsky, and that says it all. But when we think about Evan Makovsky, what we really need to think about is his vision, his innovativeness, his voice. He has a strong point of view about what is possible, and he never lets anyone settle for less. He thinks big, he dreams big, and he goes big. I first want to give thanks to the Creator who has sustained me so I could be here this evening. There are numerous thank yous that should be acknowledged. However, with just a few minutes, 
I'm going to use my time to talk to the junior achievers. Number one, don't ask someone how they became successful. Instead, ask yourself, where do I see myself one year from today? Where do I see myself two years from today? Where do I see myself five years from today? Then make a plan with milestones so you can measure if you were on the path or off the path. If you were off the path, you need to correct so you can get back on the path and then you too will be successful. Number two, you can't do it alone. You need partners. My partner had a way to get to one's deepest thoughts. He disagreed with you. My partner had a way to get to engage you. You would be digging deeper to prove your point. Sooner or later, it became argumentative. He would suddenly stop and say something like, I now know how you think, and you know how I think. Let's take the best parts of each and go forward. The real point here is that if you have two partners and they think exactly alike, you don't need one of them. This is true in business and in one's personal life. <laughs> my best partner in life is my wife, Evie, with whom I hope to celebrate. I hope to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary this year. I assure you, this partnership was not without a disagreement or two, but it was always with the intent of having a beneficial outcome. I love you. One last thing to the young people. Do what you love, love what you do, you will never go to work. Thank you to all of my associates from NAI, Shane Smukowski, for all the time and effort you give to our company. And thank you to all my friends and family that dressed up on a Thursday night to attend this evening. <laughs> Congratulations to my fellow inductees. I'm honored to be mentioned with you all as well as those inductees that preceded us. Most importantly, thank you to the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce in partnership with Junior Achievement Rocky Mountain that implement and support programs that educate our young people regarding entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and work readiness. Thank you very much for this honor.